Okay, here we are. <coughs> this is the Cushman uh, MT-71A carburetor off of an 8 horsepower uh, Cushman Husky from uh, 1963. But uh, whatever kind of Cushman carburetor you got, it's going to be a Tillotson that looks like this sucker. So, <coughs> we've uh, taken it off of the motor, the motor scooter and <coughs> <laughs> I think somebody has somebody has helped us with this pipe fitting on here. That uh, not uh, not too useful. Let's see. I need to get some paper towels. Now I'm inside here. This is my radio overhaul workbench, but it's uh, warm in here and there's lots of good light, and I've done all the nasty cleaning already. So I'm in here, I've got uh, something to protect my uh, workbench table. And because I've had solvent and uh, other crud uh, squirted through this, uh, I've got some absorbent paper towel. Um, but -ba So I've already removed this uh, um, uh, idle mixture needle and uh, uh, squirted some crud through there. So, I should have my um, there's the main uh, there's the main needle. We'll take a look at it, and it is not damaged at all. Uh, it's extremely uh, good. So before you do this, what you want to do is have in hand uh, your handy dandy little. <coughs> carburetor repair kit from Dennis Carpenter or whoever you're getting it from and uh, anyway it's all in here somewhere <coughs> there's no point really in taking this apart until you have uh, got your replacement parts at hand um, what I noticed about this carburetor uh, Trying to start the engine, and we're talking about a basically a glorified barn find. Uh, it had a previous owner who spent some time on it and got it running, and then it sat for two or three years. Uh, but what he did to it, I don't really know because he died. But here you can see some some good grunge coming out of this thing already. Plenty of crud in there. Um, when I was trying to start this thing, I could only start it using um, uh, starter fluid dis despite having uh, uh, taken the needles out and blown, uh, uh, blown through the passages, foot fresh gas in it, all that good stuff, uh, but didn't do anything with the ignition system other than make sure it had a good spark plug. What I was noticing was a bunch of uh, dribbling uh, out the uh, out the mouth of the carburetor here, uh, and so I assume that means that either uh, the float is uh, has got a hole in it, or the little uh, rubber tip needle valve uh, is worn out, uh, or there's just you know all grunged up. Uh, one of those things. What am I after here? Can't talk and think at the same time. So. Um, um, I could get it, uh, I could get the uh, idle mixture to work and adjust, I could get the main jet to work and adjust, and uh, it was actually running pretty good, but it was nearly impossible to start. And um, so it's possible some uh, little passage in here is, is bunged up, but it spelled to me um, uh, either... Uh, ignition timing problems if the if the point gap is real small the start the uh, ignition will be advanced and it'll be very difficult to start and uh, so that's possible and I haven't pulled the flywheel off to see but this uh, this dribbling out the mouth of the carburetor is is indicative of uh, of uh, float uh, float problems so we're gonna uh, take a look in there first 
and see what we got. So, there's our float. And uh, I have to look in the book to uh, measure, the, uh, measure the height of the float here uh, from the flange and see if the float height is set right. Um, but what I think, uh, of course I'll, have, I'll take this float and uh, I'm going to give a listen to it now. I'm not hearing any sloshing. A little hard to tell if it's too heavy. But I'll push this pin out if I can. It's like it's gonna feels like it wants to come right out. Um, dee -dee -dee -dee. Oh I got my little pin. Uh, let's see if we can use this. There we go. So that just came right out of there. Float is light and it's not uh, sloshing. So I'm going to submerge this in something and see if I see any bubbles. But I suspect that that float is okay. Here's the needle valve. And I can see on the needle valve a very distinct uh, ring. i got to put on my magnifying glasses. So clean up the damn... Uh, workbench to the point where I can't find anything. I really <laughs> really haven't done any more than push the shit aside. Uh, well, okay. Let me swing the handy dandy little magnifier over here. I don't think you're going to see this. But there's the there's the tip of it. I can't feel a score on there, but uh, we'll probably replace it anyway. So we'll have a look in the, the seat, which is pretty, pretty crude. And even cruder is what I'm going to do next. God, that tastes good. Well, it certainly seals okay. Uh, this I've just flopped it out here and I can't find it. Uh, let's see, uh, there it is. So, <coughs> this seat. Looks fine. <coughs> and the little needle seems to seat fine. So I'm beginning to think that maybe um, contain my parts here before I lose them. I'm famous for dropping things on the floor and never being able to find them again. So, <clears throat> I think uh, we'll look at uh, the condition of that float and seeing whether or not uh, uh, it actually floats <laughs> or not. And um, then we'll, uh, if it's okay, uh, We'll set the height. I have a new float in the stuff that I got from uh, Dennis Carpenter. I have a whole bunch of stuff. New jets, new seats, uh, needle seats, gaskets, uh, new float, new uh, um, uh, float bowl uh, needle. And uh, so I could just put all new stuff in here, and I think maybe it will. I'm getting what I think is a little bit of corrosion out of the bottom of this thing. It just looks like gray crud. And I think that that is either the real old residual dirt, or it's, but it looks to me more like a 
aluminum corrosion. So I might just wipe this with a bit of phosphoric acid, but uh, it, there's nothing in there that's going to uh, clog up the carburetor, that's for sure. It's just uh, making the end of my finger dirty, so we'll get to that. So here's a little hole in the bottom of the float bowl where the gas goes to this. I think I gotta go and get my little pick. I get my little dental pick. Here's another one of these leather. The little leather washer uh, right in here where the uh, This is the little knurled uh, nergus for the the um, high-speed needle, and uh, the high-speed needle goes through the center of this uh, leather washer, and then this ferrule presses up against it. It was not leaking from uh, the main uh, the high-speed needle, which they often do. So I think in this case, I'm going to say if it ain't broke, don't fix it, because uh, when I pull this leather uh, washer <laughs> out of this one uh, from the from the settling bowl. I lost that washer and it took me two days to find it. So I think uh, for the moment I'm going to leave that in there. It isn't leaking and uh, I'm not at all sure that the replacement part from Dennis Carpenter is going to be uh, really this uh, the right uh, leather washer. It might looks like a flat washer in there in there. No, ah! oh, that was smart. Well there's something not to do. I hope you saw that. I blew in the uh, the hole for the the high speed jet hoping to uh, blow through this little hole down here into the float bowl and what happened was that there was solvent inside the carburetor and it blew right out the uh, so I blew in this way and it blew out this way uh, out the the um, the idle jet and blew solvent right into my eye so there's a dumb shit thing that you don't probably want to do um, <laughs> one way you can get around this is get a little plastic tube and uh, use the plastic tube to blow in these orifices. <clears throat> I guess you can use compressed air if you want. I don't like to use anything high pressure on here, but you could do that. Uh, but clearly it was not uh, not a real smart thing to do. <clears throat> uh, at least not when you've just just been squirting uh, acetone and crap in, in the passages of your carburetor. So, <clears throat> there we are. <clears throat> There's this little Welsh plug here, at least that's what Dennis Carpenter calls it. There's two of them. And you can see that there's, well that's one more, one more jet. I think this is the, what I like to <coughs> call an emulsion tube. And we're going to have to use a better screwdriver for this. I may have to go out, and this is a poor screwdriver. You didn't see me using this Harbor Freight piece of shit screwdriver. Okay. Go and get a larger, <coughs> better screwdriver. There we go. This is an Ender screwdriver, and all I have to say, guys, is if you use Harbor Freight screwdrivers, <coughs> why? You can go to <coughs> any Ace Hardware, and uh, this is a Stanley. Here's an Ender's. Uh, and Ender's screwdrivers usually either come with a black handle or they'll come with a, uh, a handle like this that's a clear, clear in orange or red. They have hardened tips. They're high quality. They're only a few dollars a piece. Um, every, uh, every Ace Hardware has them. Uh, they may have the Ace Hardware name on it instead of Ender's, uh, but they have hardened tips. These things from Harbor Freight are pure shit. Uh, you know, this is good for opening 
you paint cans of paint <coughs> and that's about what it's good for uh, you know but get to get to here this tiny little thing is an Enders uh, this is a great screwdriver I think I've had this for at least 25 years uh, great uh, great screwdriver so use good stuff guys uh, you don't want to chew this stuff up you saw how hard this was to get out and uh, I think this is the mixing tube. So let's see. It's, uh, it's free anyway. Couple of little holes through here and through here. <coughs> so uh, I'm not going to do this in my uh, in my radio workshop, but I'll take this out and blow the uh, I don't know what I did with that can of uh, carburetor cleaner. But I'll take and blow all these passages out with uh, with acetone. Yeah, here's. Here's a, an actual jet in here. So that probably should come out if I can do it without chewing it up. Looks like the fuel flow is from the bottom of the float bowl through the uh, high-speed needle jet uh, <coughs> up this way through this jet and this mixing tube and over here is where the um, uh, idle uh, mixtures needle is and uh, that uh, meets the top of this so that's the fuel flow, fuel flow, um, I can't talk anymore because it's mold. Um, bottom of the float bowl, high speed jet, up to the top through this, through this internal um, uh, fixed jet, um, and into this port, into the carburetor, and here is the uh, mixture mixture adjustment going into that same port. So I got a quite I have quite figured out the the fuel flow into the into the body of the carburetor. But I see down here it's really rather crude. It's a <coughs> little spud jet or pipe right there where the fuel mixture gets uh, sucked in the carburetor and atomized. <laughs> well, that's, it's crude. Got to give it that. Oh, wait a minute. That in. I see. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> more glasses, more light. <clears throat> I love these YouTube videos where people are explaining things they don't understand. I hate them like mad, but that's uh, Peter Peterbury making one right now. Okay, so here's a tiny little hole here, and that goes over, and that's the mixture, the idle mixture is coming through this little hole here just on the other side of the the throttle uh, butterfly and then the main I'm going to do this without getting it in my Fuel from the main jet is coming in in the middle of the carburetor on the opposite side, opposite this 
fixed jet here. So that seems to be the fuel flow and I don't think there's anything behind this little welch plug except uh, this this chamber and this tiny little hole into the uh, into the uh, body of the carburetor. So if it wouldn't idle, and if the idle adjustment didn't work, I think I'd pull that out of there. But I don't really see. I'll I'll squirt some uh, cleaner through there, and if it comes out this little port like it should, I think I'm going to call it good. So pretty simple. Um, take a really good quality screwdriver, just the right size, to uh, remove this jet and. I think this one is just a little small, so rather than chew that up, I want to get just the right, just, that's too small. Okay, I'm going to have to go out to my, uh, go out to my motor workshop where I've got uh, uh, other screwdrivers and see what I can do there. Alright, I think that's about it for this section of this thing. We'll uh, be replacing... Uh, well, we could replace the main jet, but I don't see anything wrong with this one. I don't even see any obvious wear on it. There's no scoring, no burring. Uh, it's just as sweet as it can be. So I don't see any problem with it. Um, I've got the idle jet out there, and it looked okay too. And it may be that the previous uh, owner who did some work on this and, and was the one who got it going from its long slumber in a barn uh, may have replaced these things. Um, I just don't know or they just may not have been uh, wrecked. If they're not over tightened, what wrecks these things is people over tightening these things, jam them down on the seat until they get all scored or just years of use and erosion but uh, uh, I get a feeling this this is from a trailster that this thing really never got used that much. Um, the engine's got a lot of compression. It really doesn't uh, doesn't smoke, and uh, uh, at least noticeably anyway. So I think uh, you know, it ain't all that worn out. Okay, this is the end of this one.